Dear learners, welcome to Legal Awareness Program of Odisha State Open University. I am Mayank Tiwari, Assistant Professor of Law at National Law University, Odisha. We were discussing about the basics of commercial laws. Already we have discussed about the law of contract. We have discussed about the banking laws. Today we are going to discuss about the Motor Vehicle Act of 1988. As we all know, an ordinary care is required for all the persons plying vehicle on the road. In India, Fatal Accident Act of 1855 was passed to give right to the persons injured or expired in an accident. The Fatal Accident Act provided for the procedure and the right of the named person who can claim compensation from the persons claim committing negligence. Further in 1939, the Motor Vehicle Act 1939 was introduced to consolidate the law relating to motor vehicles in India. The concept like third party insurance, unlimited liability of the insurance companies, no fault liability were introduced. But with the advent of new technology, fast life and increasing traffic on road, it was required to come with the strict provisions of road safety and compensation to the victims which led to introduction of the Motor Vehicle Act 1988. The purpose of the Motor Vehicle Act of 1988 to take care of increasing number of both commercial and personal vehicles in the country. It also encouraged the adoption of the higher technology in automotive sector to maintain the road safety standards, pollution control measures, and to lay down the standard for transportation of hazardous and explosive material. It further provides in the purpose to lay down the effective ways of tracking down the traffic offenders to lay down the strict procedures for granting and renewal of driving licenses, to lay down the effective standards for standardized pollution control devices. Now, there are certain topics which are covered by the Motor Vehicles Act of 1988. We will be taking some of the important topics out of that. Licensing of the drivers of motor vehicle is one of the important topics. A person can drive a motor vehicle in any public place, only when a driving license is issued to him by the competent authority in this regard. No person under 18 years of age shall be eligible to drive the motor vehicle in the public place. But provided the condition is that a person can drive a motor vehicle with the engine up to 50 cc after attaining the age of 16 years. The person can drive the transport vehicle only after attaining the age of 21 years. So these are the basic conditions when a person attain the age of 18 year, attain the age of 16 years or attain the age of 21 years respectively the person is eligible for driving the motor vehicles that we have discussed. The second thing is the currency of the license for what time the, the license will be into picture. So when the license will expire when the same is required to be renewed it will be discussed in the currency of the license. So learner's license shall be effective for the duration of six months from the date of issue. Likewise the license to drive the transport vehicle, its life shall be for the duration of three years. It means after the duration of three years, again the same shall be required to be renewed. License to drive a transport vehicle carrying goods of dangerous or hazardous nature, the duration for the license is one year. And in other cases of the license which is issued generally till the person attains the age of 50 years. After 50 years of age, the renewal of the license can be made for the duration of five years. Licensing authority is having the power to revoke the license of any of the person or any of the holder to which the license is issued in following circumstances. The first one is holder is a habitual criminal or the habitual drunkard. Holder is habitual addict to any narcotic drug or psychotic substances. Holder is using or has used a motor vehicle in the commission of a cognizable offence. Holder has, by his previous conduct as driver of a motor vehicle, shown that his driving is likely to be attended with danger to the public. The situation next is, holder has obtained any driving license or a license by the fraud or misrepresentation for which the information supplied was not correct. Holder was committed any such act which is likely to cause nuisance or danger to the public. Holder has failed to submit to or has not passed the required test. In all these conditions, the licensing authority is having power to revoke the license of the holder. 
Further, proceeding to the next important term in the motor vehicle act, it is the accident. Accident means in general an unplanned mishap and the main important focus of the motor vehicle act is also to provide adequate compensation, immediate relief by means of compensation to the victims who got injured or who lost their life. The family member of those persons who passed away need to be compensated for the same and there is the rule of the liability clause which is very important. So discussing one case very simply in United India Insurance Company Limited versus Somara Devi. It is the case which is decided by the Patna High Court. Patna High Court observed that accident denotes an event which takes place without one's foresight or expectation. It is unforeseen event or overlooked mischief. So necessity of insurance for the third party risk is very important in regard to the accidents. And this is basically to provide a relief to the victim. Section 146 of the Motor Vehicle Act provide that no person shall use, accept as a passenger or cause or allow any other person to use a motor vehicle in a public place unless there is policy of insurance. For the vehicles carrying on hazardous or dangerous goods, a policy under Public Liability Insurance Act 1991 is required in advance. The next thing is who can file an application for the compensation? A person who has sustained the injury. Second is the owner of the property. Third is in case of death by accident, all or any of the legal representatives of the deceased. And fourth is by the agent of the person who has sustained injury or by the agent of all or any of the legal representatives of the deceased. Compensation is an important aspect in regard to the Motor Vehicles Act. And it is also one of the purpose as I already discussed for the Motor Vehicle Act to provide adequate and quick compensation. So the compensation can be provided. The first is in case of the no fault liability. When death or permanent disablement of any person has been resulted by the motor vehicle, even if there is no fault, the compensation is required to be paid to the victim or his hires. The owner of motor vehicle is under an obligation to make the payment. Even if there is no fault on the part of the owner of motor vehicle, the person is required to make the compensation. Now, in case of death, the liability is to the tune of rupees 50,000. And in case of the permanent disablement, the liability is to the tune of rupees 25,000. So the liability is established when the vehicle is identified. Identification of vehicle is required here, but it is not required to prove whether the owner of vehicle is at fault or not. Case of the no fault liability. There was a case National Insurance Company Limited versus Honapa. In this case, it was held that in case of no fault liability, the claimant is not required to prove the permanent disablement was due to the wrongful act or negligence of the owner of the vehicle. As we already discussed that once the vehicle is identified, the liability is established. Coming to next liability, which is hit and run liability. Hit and run motor accident means an accident arising out of the motor vehicle or motor vehicles, the identity whereof cannot be ascertained in spite of reasonable efforts for the purpose. In this case, the compensation is required to be given to the victim. So quantum of the compensation in case of death resulting from hit and run case, the amount is rupees 25,000. In case of the grievous hurt from the hit and run case, the quantum is rupees 12,500. When the certificate of insurance is issued by the insurer in favor of the person by whom the policy has been effected, judgment or award in respect of such liability as is requirement to be covered by the policy. The insurer shall have the primary liability to make the payment to the person entitled for the same. The payment shall be made by the insurer as a judgment debtor. So it is the primary responsibility of the insurer once any insured has taken the insurance policy and has made the payment of the premium. In that case, the insurer which is providing the insurance policy is liable to compensate to the person who is affected by such accident. Defense is available to the insurance company in the third party insurance. There is a breach of specified condition of the policy which may include condition excluding the use of vehicle. When the vehicle used for hire or reward, when there is no permit to apply for hire or reward. For organizing the race or the speed testing, 
when vehicle is a transport vehicle and is used for the purpose not allowed by the permit issued by the authority. Conditions excluding driving by the named person or persons or by any person who is not duly licensed. During the disqualification by any person who has been disqualified for holding or obtaining the driving license. Exclusion of liability for injury caused by condition of war, civil war or rights. The policy is void when it has been obtained without disclosing the material facts. These are the defenses which are available to the insurance company in the third party insurance. Right on the insurance to recover from the owner. In certain cases, when the insurance company has paid the amount to the person who got affected by accident, it can recover the same amount from the owner. The liability of the insurance company even at that point of time is strict. Even they have defense, they need to make the primary payment to the injured. They cannot escape from making the primary payment to the injured. It is right. They can recover the same amount from the owner of the car or owner of the motor vehicle by which the accident has taken place. The recovery can be made by filing the execution application. So learners, we have discussed till now about the law of contract wherein we have discussed about the contract, its meaning, definition, agreement, essentials of a valid contract. We have discussed about the banking law wherein we have discussed about the negotiable instruments, different kind of negotiable instruments including promissory note, bills of exchange and check. And finally, we have discussed about the Motor Vehicle Act, licensing, accident, liabilities, defenses available to the insurers. I hope that all the videos will make you conversant with the topics that we have discussed. In addition to this, you please go through the self-learning material which will make you clear about all these topics. Thank you. Have happy learning.